the next gen version of Madden 21 is about a month away. The Xbox Series X comes out, I believe, on November 10th, and the PS5 on November 12th. So literally a month and a few days away, and it's time to start talking about what you can expect. The 10 biggest changes that we know about so far that is going to be on Madden 21 next gen that is not on the current gen version of the game. Now also keep in mind a lot more information is about to start rolling out. In fact, just yesterday NBA 2K put out their full next gen trailer and today they dropped some information about how the next gen version of the game is changing and seeing as 2K and Madden are both on very similar timelines this year, that means the Madden full should be coming out soon, a full on trailer, much different than the little preview trailer we got months ago. All that should be dropping very soon, but for today we're going to go over the 10 biggest changes that we already know about that a lot of people seem to have kind of missed or maybe skipped over now if you are new to the channel however and you want to be up to date with all of this latest news make sure to subscribe turn on the bell icon so that you never miss any of these important uploads or the next gen gameplay footage when it comes live pretty soon so number one on the list is the controller haptics and how they're kind of taking the next step forward. Now, keep in mind a lot of the things on this list are going to be detail oriented things. Like in terms of like new big features and modes, we don't really know about that yet. Typically, we don't get a lot of big new modes or huge new features when they jump, you know, you know, mid generation, they're going from one to the next. So a lot of this is going to be detail oriented stuff and controller haptics is one of the big ones. Um, it says you're going to be able to sense the impacts of shots, passes, catches, kicks, tackles, and hits with immersive controller haptics. A new dual sense controller for the PlayStation 5 with rich and responsive haptic feedback deepens the gameplay experience, letting you feel the rhythm of the game in your hands. Now again, keep in mind all this stuff we're going over is both FIFA and Madden, their two biggest sports titles. So when you hear things like shots, obviously that's more of a FIFA thing, but when you think of like passes, catches, tackles, hits, that's a football thing, right? So the controller haptics are definitely going up another level, especially from what I've been able to understand on the PlayStation 5 controller. So this is an area where I think PS5 gamers will have a slight edge over the Xbox Series X guys because their controller haptic feedback I think is a little bit more advanced. Advanced. From what I understand, I could be a little bit wrong on that, uh, but that's what it sounds like. You're going to be able to really sense the feel and the controller. So like if you're getting hit from the right side, you're going to feel more of a heavy rumble on the right side of the controller. Or, you know, if you're getting hit low, you're going to feel it at, on the lower end of the controller, things like that. Also, the, you know, things they can do with, um, you know, the triggers, like making the triggers more stiff. So if you're trying to, you know, run through somebody in, in a Madden game, right? Like in, in there's bodies on you, right? They can make that, that sprint button or something like that a little bit stiffer. Like you're going to be able to feel like you're in, you're in a different situation than whereas now, whether you're, you know, breaking through a gang tackle or running in the open field, you know, the controller always feels the same. So they're going to be able to program these different things into the controller. Now, again, I think it's going to be a little bit more, uh, meaningful on PlayStation 5, but the Xbox is still going to be able to experience some of this as well. Number two on the list is the most obvious thing, but we have to include it because it would just be foolish not to, and that's the graphical jump. Now, the thing with this is I'm actually surprised at what appears to be where the graphical jump actually is, and that's based off the 2K21 trailer that dropped yesterday, which I'll link below in the pinned comment if you haven't seen it. You should go watch it after this video because it just looks amazing. Now, I always say I don't expect graphics to jump that crazy at this point in time because we're already so far gone. We're never going to get that PS1 to PS2 or PS2 to PS3 type graphical jump. However, looking at that 2K21 trailer yesterday and kind of understanding that 2K and Madden are usually pretty similar in terms of graphics. It's like, you know, one area that both games always gets pretty, pretty right. You know, they always look beautiful. It's other areas of the game that, you know, people take issue with. But when you see the jump from 2K21 current gen to next gen by looking at the comparison shots and just looking at the trailer in general, I'm honestly surprised the more I went back and watched it, just how much the leap seems to be going this year. And that gives me an idea of what Madden could look like. Even if Madden doesn't look exactly this good, it's going to be pretty close. And I think, you know, for me, it's like looks are great. Yeah, obviously, the, you know, you need depth, you need immersion, you need good gameplay, but you don't want something that looks bad either. And to know that Madden is going to probably be very close in terms of looks to what we saw on yesterday's trailer for 2K21, that's kind of pretty exciting for me, and, and, I, and I can't wait. The, the more real these players and, and the fields and all that start to look, it, the more that does immerse you in the game. It's just that with Madden, there's a lot of areas of the game that need to be brought up to match you know, the, the look of the faces and the field and things like that. But definitely expect a pretty big graphical jump. 
Number three on the list, blazing fast load times. Now we talk about this every generation. Obviously the load times get faster, but then at the same time, the games, you know, get more intense, right? Which causes them to take longer to load sometimes because there's so much more, you know, higher graphic quality and things like that, that, you know, it slows down the loading. But this time around, it seems to not be the case because not only, you know, are the systems so much more powerful, but they have the solid state drives, which are going to do wonders for load times. It says here, faster load times get you in the game quicker than ever. Never lose focus as stadium environments will load with unprecedented speed, letting you get to the kickoff in seconds. Now, I believe this, obviously, I haven't played any next gen, you know, Madden or any of these games yet. But I believe it just because I saw the jump from like a regular Xbox One to the Xbox One X. Something that would take me 45 to 50 seconds to load like into a game or a challenge would take like 15 seconds. And that was on the same generation of console but just jumping up to the more powerful one. So, and again that's without having a solid state drive as well which all these new systems are going to have. So, it really isn't out of the realm of possibility for it to literally take, you know, three to five seconds to load into games on this next gen. And maybe to you, that might not be a big deal. But for me, that's always one of the pain points of being a gamer is load times. We hate load times. And it seems like the more powerful the systems have gotten at times, the slower the loading has gotten because there's just been so much more stuff to load. But now because of where we're at and with the solid state drives, it seems like we're finally getting to that spot where the load times are actually super, super fast, which does make the gaming experience a little bit better number four on the list deferred lighting and rendering which i believe i could be wrong but i believe this is kind of goes hand in hand with like the ray tracing technology which has been used in movies for a long time and now it's like really starting to come more to gaming and you know lighting is everything it, you'd be surprised i think that's why the graphics look so good already on next gen i think it's more so the lighting that's where a lot of these games and companies are focusing on now because the graphics are already so good but to take it up to that next level having things like ray tracing and just better lighting actually makes things look more lifelike and it says here authentic new environments unlocked by a new deferred lighting system create ultra realistic football experiences and player fidelity enhancing the game in every part of the stadium it's just going to look a lot more realistic the lighting is taking everything up to a whole nother level and you know this kind of goes i guess hand in hand with the graphics jumping but it is like a very specific thing that's going to make these th these games and these stadiums look much more lifelike than they ever have before Number five on the list, reimagined player bodies. It says here, next gen technology creates deeper definition in player physiques, while dynamic lighting accentuates details such as faces, hair, kits, and uniforms to take athletes to a whole new level of realism. Now, upon reading this, it sounds good because it's it's an area of Madden that people have had problems with for a while. The the player bodies, you know, there's not enough different variety. It seems like and. You know, the pads are very huge and a lot, it, they just don't look as realistic as they could. And I think this is an area that 2K does a lot better than Madden. However, in some of the brief clips we have seen of the next gen Madden, you know, you have the clip of Lamar Jackson running where his body looks pretty much on point. His pads don't look too, too crazy. But then you see some of these other clips or like pictures where the pads look bigger than they are now so it's kind of like one of those things that i have to see it on next gen to like really understand what they're talking about because some of the stuff we've seen kind of seems to go against what they're saying here and just things like hair and madden have always like the hair still looks like ps2 level hair which is like a weird thing so you know this is what they're saying but from what we've seen so far, it, it, it would seem that like I, I'm not 100% sure about this. So we'll have to see what it actually looks like when we get our hands on the next gen version of the game. Number six on the list, spatialized audio. It says here, whether you're running out of the tunnel in Atlanta or leaping into the stands in Green Bay, hear the spine tingling roar of the stadium thanks to spatialized audio technology new to Madden that wraps around you for a completely immersive experience. So now we're getting into audio, kind of like how we talked about lighting. Lighting and audio are those two areas that these companies and these games are like, they're really trying to take it to that next level now because the games already look, at, you know, pretty damn good. How do you make it better now? You make the audio come to life. You make the lighting like you see in movies. And that takes everything up to just a whole different level than we've ever experienced in gaming. And audio is such an underrated aspect of gaming in my opinion. And just movies and just things in general. You, you really underrate how good, really good audio can be. So 
To me, this sounds like something that's going to be a little bit better, like on a headset, potentially kind of hearing the surroundings of the stadium, depending on, you know, you know, where the noise is coming from. Uh, I, I think they even spoke about this in 2K about how the, the crowds are going to be even more lifelike and, you know, the roar of the crowds and things like that. Um, so this is definitely something that excites me. I feel like for Madden, for a long time, the crowds have been non-existent they're just very robotic they don't really like cheer a whole lot and like go crazy during the a big play whereas in 2k this has always been done a lot better and when i play 2k i always feel like the crowd is alive and it, and it really makes the game more fun whereas in madden the crowd plays no role it, pretty much so i'm hoping that this definitely uh, is a big change for next gen because it, while it seems like a little thing it definitely can immerse you in the game a lot more Number seven, stats driven player movement. It says here, real life athlete data feeds into the Madden animation engine to create fluid athletic player movement when accelerating, running routes and changing direction. Um, so this one, you know, I, I talked about this one a while back. I'm still not 100% sure what this means. It sounds good, right? Stats driven player movement. So depending on the stats of players and like, you know, the, the advanced analytics of what they do in real life, maybe that determines you know, what type of animations they can get in Madden because some players just, you know, they accelerate faster or some people run routes better and that, that might change how they perform in Madden. I don't 100% know what this means. It sounds very interesting, but we really need more information on this. It sounds very vague right now. Could be great. It could be something that means nothing. Uh, so it's really, it is something to note, but we need more information on it. Number eight on the list, off-ball humanization says emotion is everything. From adjusting shin pads in the 89th minute to screaming for passes in the end zone, player humanization unlocks the most authentic character behaviors ever seen in sports video games, letting you see the detail and feel the emotion of football at the highest level. I mean, another area that Madden has lacked, um, it's again, might sound stupid or small to a lot of people, but... You know, in Madden, it never feels like any moment is bigger than the than the next moment. That you know, the, the beginning of the game feels the same as the end of the game, and you know, the players, the way they kind of move around post play, like there's never like senses of urgency. There's never like that sense of a player being tired, being amped up, or like you know, none of that really exists in Madden. So this is something again, kind of similar to like crowd noise and stuff like that. Little change that can actually make the game feel more alive. Um, you know, something we definitely don't have on current gen. So I'm curious to see how this is implemented on next generation. Number nine on the list, exquisite weather detail. Mother nature comes alive in Madden like never before. In stunning new detail, see standing water on rain drenched sidelines and cold winter snow accumulate on the field. Visually enhanced weather conditions also affect cloth definition on athletes to match the environment variables. Now we did see, uh, a, you know, a clip of Brady in that little teaser trailer months ago, as well as a screenshot where the weather did look amazing. And this is an area again that I've seen a lot of people complain. They say the weather it almost looks fake in Madden, and you know the snow always looks the same, the rain always looks the same, and it just you never really feel like you're truly playing out in the elements. So again, another area with I think if you're talking about the lighting and you're just talking about the graphical jump those little details i think it's going to make weather games feel more like weather games it's going to look like the players are drenched if it's raining or you know the snow piling up on the field the puddles in certain parts of the field if it's a heavy rain for a lot of people this is something they they want to see and it, it definitely sounds like and from the, the brief little shots we've seen definitely looks like we're getting that on next generation and last but not least number 10 on the list it says game day immersion and they also have a tagline here that says it's in the game and you know with Madden that, you know, that has not always been the case lately. It says here, new contextual player bench and fan reactions let you feel the explosive passion of a last minute winner or a game clinching touchdown. And pregame cinematics deliver an unprecedented match day experience to immerse you in the sights and sounds of professional football. So some of this goes hand in hand with stuff we talked about earlier, you know, the roar of the crowd, uh, just immersion in general, a, a area that Madden has severely lacked for more than a decade. There's just no real immersion in the game. The crowd coming alive, the fan reactions, um, all of this stuff is needed. Not sure why this type of stuff can't be done on current gen. I don't know that it can't be done or, you know, if it's just it's too 
uh, it weighs too much on the memory of those systems. I don't know the technicalities of it, but if it's coming to next gen and it's going to be something that's here to stay, along with everything else on this list, I think Madden gets better by default. All these things on this list sound great, but at the end of the day, how much does it mean if the gameplay is still broken in a lot of areas? How much does it mean if they still don't, you know, stick to their commitment to make franchise mode better? You know, those things matter too. Um, and you know, I've heard rumors that the, the, the next gen Madden is going to be a totally different game, but it is, it's just that it's just a rumor. And I've also heard rumors that that's pretty much where all their focus has been for a while. And that's a big reason why current gen Madden is in the state that it's in, which again, it's just a rumor, but it kind of seems like common sense that that's where their focus would be. But if this comes out and it's still kind of built on the back of a lot of the same broken things with the current gen Madden, then we're still going to see a lot of those same problems, even if it looks better and has a little bit more immersion. So, you know, while all this stuff sounds good, you know, it, it's really going to depend how much work they truly did to rebuild a lot of the areas of the game or if they rebuilt the whole game, which I don't think they did, but all that's going to matter too but i just wanted you guys to be up to date again we're going to have a lot more information about this coming soon so make sure to subscribe bell icon on so you don't miss it as always i will see you guys next time